Things are different this morning. <laughs> but it's, we come in, we are, the, the building is not the church of God. We are the church. So wherever we're assembled together, there he shall be with us. All right. So let's go, let's stand and let's invite the Lord's prayer into our midst this morning. That he may just richly bless us and touch our hearts. And uh, we, may we follow his will. Which is the thing that we should be doing. And we give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for all the things that you have done for us. We thank you for healing us. And we thank you for taking care of us. We give you praise. It says that we should praise you all the time. And in praise. And it says we need to tell these things to the world. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. All right. Yeah, huh? good enough. You got that thing fixed? We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. Have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him. Our Lord. He is all my righteousness. I stand complete in Him and worship Him. He is all my righteousness. I stand complete in Him and worship Him. My righteousness, I stand complete in Him and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, Brother John, you get you and Brother Warren there. Brother Warren, would you pray? It says in all things to give thanks. So no matter where we're at, we need to be thanking Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Well, thank you, Lord, for giving to me so rich a salvation, so rich and so free. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Well, thank you, Lord, for giving to me the rich a salvation so rich and so free. Well, thank. Such 
to great salvation, so rich and so free. Well, as I travel through this pilgrim land, there's a friend who walks with me. He set me free. He built the bonds of prison for me. Well, I'm my Jesus to see. Well, praise to God. He set me free. How many did he set free this morning? Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, I don't think I have anything else, Brother Ray. I guess it'd be your turn. There. Well, I'm glad that I am free. Amen. I uh, want to thank you for coming. And I have been giving a note. And I'll just read it. Brother, Val Brother Valentine, Pastor Grammer asked me to not ask, but tell you. He means it. He wants me to tell it. <laughs> and it says, if you would acknowledge the following people who work Saturday at the church, so we could have a service in the fellowship hall. John Kell, John Livingcood, and Melvin Beavers. And so we thank you for setting this up. And uh, I want to encourage those uh, who are listening to be here tonight. I hope no one stays away because we're not in that hall. And we can thank God because Brother John Livingood showed me a picture where the sheetrock collapsed Friday. I'm glad we wasn't in the service when it came down. And it's quite a picture I've seen with the sheetrock coming down. It's a mess. And, uh, but uh, I loved what uh, Brother Kell, I, you know, I just like to call him song. He, he just impresses me with the song leading. It's anointing and, and I just love it. But our song leader said that the building is not the church. And he's right. You know, looking at the scripture, uh, I can find hardly any, of all the great things that happened, I was running through mine and surely there must be some, but I can't right now recall anything uh, of the miracles or any of the great events that we preach about that happened in the church. Isn't that strange? Now, the, the layman was, was at the temple, but uh, when I read about the churches, usually Paul is encouraging them to do better and sometimes getting after them for uh, being lax. But as far as just the miracles and the moving of God, very little, if any happened inside the church. It's just a building. And I was looking at back at my lifetime, and I can remember as a young preacher going out to cotton camps, some of the greatest 
meetings and the greatest move of God in my life has not been in a church. It's been outside the church. Uh, how many of you have been at a Brush Arbor meeting? Anybody? Oh, there, 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 yeah, there's, there's four or five. Uh, I was back in the Ozarks. At a, maybe I shouldn't tell this, but we was at a Brush Arbor meeting, and uh, uh, there was a uh, young boy, and he was mentally challenged. I don't know. Maybe he was 15, 16. But boy, he was there every night, and he, he was eager to get to the altar. And he uh, would go down to the altar, and all he would do is pray, and he'd say, Bless God, I see Jesus. Bless Jesus, I see God. And he'd be just praying. Well, one night there was a bunch of honorary boys that crawled up on top of this brush arbor, and they had moved some of the brush back, literally brush, so they could see down in there. And they was looking down, and that boy looked up, and he says, Bless God, I see... He said, blessed God, I do see somebody up there. <laughs> Amen. But I can remember the times that we had in the Brush Arbor. And so I want you to uh, not miss the service tonight. Perhaps this will be fixed by next Sunday. Uh, tonight I uh, have a message that I want you to hear again. I will be preaching and encourages those whose callings is in music. Anybody who sings, be here. Bring somebody with you. I think that you're going to want to hear this. I, I I say this from the bottom of my heart. I can remember the Lord dealing with me. And I was so burdened that I was in room. I told Claudine not to bother me. And I prayed and fasted for 10 days. And that was a, a heavy burden. I don't know outside of that one time uh, I have ever been dealt with by the Lord like he has in the last few days over this subject. In fact, I've got so many marks in my Bible uh, that uh, I didn't want to disturb them. And so I brought my old uh, sword that has got a lot of wear and tear on it. And I, I know that God is going to do something. Uh, during the next 10 days, weeks. And and so I want you, if you can, to be here tonight. If you've been listening uh, or watching live stream, please listen tonight. And then I especially want you to be here next Sunday night. Next Sunday night, we're going to have a time of singing. Claudine yesterday sent out 55 notices, invitations to people to come. We have, I believe, 19 singers that is going to be singing or playing specials. And so we're going to move it. There will not be any preaching. And as soon as one gets through, another one will come up and sing. And we're just going to worship God and expect great and things are going to happen. I, I believe you'll enjoy it. Bring your friends for a night of singing. When it's over with, then uh, we have a small package that we're going to give each one of you. Uh, and so plan on your next Sunday. And also, now listen. I talked to Brother Grammer and he says, I believe I'm going to be there. He will catch you if you skip. I haven't told on anybody yet. I, I, not one person have I told on that has stayed home. But he'll find out. So I'm giving you a heads up to be here and let's greet hug his neck or bump an elbow or something and tell him that we really appreciate him. He uh, is uh, going through some things and then uh, this church problem no doubt weighs on his mind. But uh, uh, God is still in charge. Amen. I'm going to be speaking in a little while on uh, the prodigal son. I've preached on that quite a bit. Claudine and I was going to preach about it. There are some truths in there. Chapter of Luke, I believe. Uh, and uh, I trust that we will be blessed by it. I especially like that part where the father sees his son coming home a long ways off. 
and he runs to meet him. This is a parable. It, it runs parallel to our spiritual experience, and it's the... What? Oh, wait a minute. Just a minute. My wife wants to give a testimony. Uh, but it's a, the only time in the Bible where you see God running. And he is running to welcome somebody back. His son's coming home. And, and it excites God. It excites heaven. The Bible says that when someone comes to the Lord, that they're absolutely rejoicing. There's a jubilee in heaven over one person who repents. And that's exciting. Okay, I'm going to give my wife the microphone. And can, or, or you come up here. Can we? Amen. God is still on the throne. Let's just give him thanks and then ask him to bless this service. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because of his testimony. You're still on the throne. You're still doing miracles. And I pray that we will honor you and give you thanks for everything that you do. And in this service, we ask and invite you to have your way in this service. We invite the Holy Spirit to anoint, to move upon us. And may we sense your presence and may our lives be changed. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I have so much to speak about tonight. I spent Wednesday kind of setting up uh, for the service and the service next Sunday. Uh, it, it's powerful. Uh, and I want to take just a moment and uh, before we talk about the prodigal son because there's things that you have to know in order to understand what I'm going to be speaking about. You've heard me make this statement that God loves music. I mean, God, God really loves music. He, he's, he's the author of it. He loves it. A, a, and Another thing that I need you to understand is that when in Genesis, and a lot of you know this, some people don't that is listening, I heard there's a politician who is Christian and uh, is running for office and they are coming, that person is being ignorant and uh, saying that uh, they made the statement that the earth is 6,000 years old or 8,000 years old or whatever and and uh, and they said our uh, scientists and geologists have proven that uh, dinosaurs they have found that is a million years old and and it's I don't know if you've seen it in the news it's a big thing it may cost this person the election but I am going to be speaking out of King James version the Schofield and everything that I say. Uh, will be in the Word of God and even in the notes and probably in the if your Bible has notes and have center line you will find this reference and in Genesis the between the first verse and the second verse just between those verses there is thousands probably millions of years that took place you, you have to understand that. And so I have no uh, argument with anyone who says that they found some dinosaurs that is a million years old. And in fact, I believe it. You know, I, I mean, how can I not believe it? I've seen the dinosaurs, and I know that uh, they're not just a few thousand. It's thousands of years, millions perhaps, between verse 1 and verse 2. In fact, just in my uh, Bible, not any notes that I've got, it's, it, it's in my Goldfield Bible. It says, but 
Three creative acts of God is recorded in this chapter. And by the way, Genesis covers uh, maybe one of the longer periods in the Bible. The beginning of Genesis to the end of Genesis is 2,300 years, almost 2,500 years. It takes place between the first of Genesis and, and the end of Genesis. And if you look at some of your other books, you'll see covered 38 years, 40 years. Uh, Exodus, maybe 200 years, but but this is a tremendous this is a a, a, a tremendous time, a, 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 and uh, but it says in here the three creative acts of God are recorded in this chapter: the heavens and the earth, animal life and human life, and then it says the first creative act refers to the dateless past, and gives scope for all of the geological ages. And so even my Bible says the very first verse refers to the dateless past. The Holy Spirit is, is, is dealing with, but, but, but you've got to understand this. We'll, we'll get to the prodigal son. But, uh, but I, uh, I want you to picture in your mind that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now, now picture God, as he has created the heavens and the earth, and uh, the angels he's created, and after he created this, and that was the, the, the time that everything was created, and, and God, as he said in the garden, this looks good, and, and he's the angels. Now, what is one of the first things that God's going to do? I mean, every, he's created the heavens and the earth and the angels. And there's no heartache. There's no sin. There's no sorrow. There's no regrets. There's no death. There's no hunger. Uh, everything is great. Can't be more beautiful. And God does something. And, and I get the clue. If you look over at Job uh, for a moment, I, I, it's a, I'll just tell you. Job, the 38th chapter. And it's right after Job had gone through the trial that he's gone through. And Job doesn't understand why he's going through this particular trial. And he says, if, if I could uh, have a face-to-face -face conference with God, if, if I could find God, if, if I could just talk to him, I'd ask him why this is going on. And Job, though he is our hero, because he stayed fast in the faith, but him questioning and him complaining upset God. And then, so God doesn't talk to Job. He doesn't tell him why. And, and, and Job is saying, oh, if I could have audience with God. And, and, and Job is, is, has been saying how that he has served God. And others said, you must have sinned. No, I haven't sinned. We know Job gave sacrifices. He sacrificed for his kids. I mean, he was a family man. He was, he, but his complaining. And you'd think if anybody had a right to complain, it would be Job. And so finally God comes on the scene. And boy, when he comes on the scene, then God is doing the talking. And he, for verse after verse after verse and chapter, he's in Job's face. And he's saying, in so many words, Job, who gives you the right to complain? And then he says, where was you when uh, I made the grass to grow? Where was you when I uh, uh, created different animals? Where was you when I did this? Where was you when I where? And it goes on and on and on. And here's one of the things that he asked Job. And, and he said, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who in this darketh counsel by words without knowledge? And then he says, listen to this. Job, gird up thy loins like a man. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare it, if thou hast understanding. Tell me if you know about it. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Wherefore are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone there? I mean, it goes on and on. But this next verse kind of grabbed me. He says, when the morning stars sang together 
and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Well, the, 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 the Bible refers to Lucifer uh, in a, another place as, uh, as, the, as a star, a morning star. And so this scripture is saying that, and so this is referring to the angels, and God is saying, Job, where was you when all this was created? And all of the angels was... So, so, so this is referring to Lucifer, and they're singing. And so, one of the things that God did after uh, He had created the first, uh, created the heaven and earth, He says, "Well, it's time to sing. It's it's time to have a concert." And you're going to find out that Lucifer was skilled in music. And so, this refers to him leading a chorus or leading singing and you're going to find out that he was skilled with music and that there was already music in and so God created everything and the first thing he said I like music and Satan I did something special in your life or Lucifer was his name uh, I, I have made you perfect I've made you mighty and you're going to be surprised about his skill and in instruments you have the ability to sing I want you to get these angels and they're going to sing and they're going to just sing glory to, and so before Adam and Eve before this ever happened and God created the heavens and the earth the angels was created then one of the first things God did. It says we're going to have a choir. We're we're going to sing. God loves music, and it was at the time that that Lucifer had rebelled against God and he fell, and then there has been an endless war between God and Lucifer over the souls of mankind, and the thing that. I, I, I may get back to my, my, but I've got to tell you what's burning in my heart. This, this is just, but the tool that the devil uses the most, now God created music. He's the author of it. The devil was created perfect in it, you'll find out tonight. And the war that goes between God and devil and is in the hearts of mankind for the souls of mankind the biggest tool that is used is music and the devil is an expert at it I, I think of the three Hebrew children uh, when they was taken in captivity then there was a degree that goes out that when they heard the music, and, and this is a devilish inspired thing in the king of, uh, in, in, in the heart of the king. And he says, when you hear this music, then you fall down and worship. And the Bible goes on to describe, if you want to read it in Daniel 3.10, it, it doesn't just say music, man, it lists them all. There was harps, and there was this instrument, and there was that instrument. I mean, it, it was a, 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 a band that was powerful. And, and if anybody knows how to put a powerful band together, it would be Satan. And so the three Hebrew children hear the music, but they don't bow. Wow, do you, do you, do you, here is music. And the children hear this music, and they say, but that is not the music that we want to hear and that music is telling us that right now we need to bow to an earthly king. And so they, they hear it and, and they say we're not going to bow and, uh, and they know that punishment is coming and the wrath of the king is, but, but that's, that's that, that music that tells me to bow, I refuse to bow to it, I'm not going to bow. And in the worldly music, the devil uses that. I doubt if very many people is just says, hey, you know what? Let's go out and, and let's just go get drunk tonight. Or let's just go out and, and, and 
have some kind of a wild party. But usually they'll say, hey, have you, do you know that there is a new band down at that bar? Let's go in and listen. And while they're in there, they get acquainted with alcohol. And Woodstock, if you remember, when they had that big band out there that was full of young people is where they got introduced to sex and drugs and revolt against this country. The devil uses music. And, uh, and I talked about it Wednesday night until even the government knows that the music is, is uh, what has influenced the action that young people have. And the devil will always have a tune. And really the only tune the devil really has is a spit tune. It's kind of trashy, and, but he does that. And I made mention, and I've got to re, uh, restate it because of what I'm seeing on TV. The devil will put a song in your heart. When there is a mob that is controlled by the devil, the devil puts a song in their heart. You watch any of the mobs, and, 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 and music can be anything from uh, an instrument to uh, somebody singing to uh, just chanting in some countries, especially in Africa, in the darkness of Africa, the natives just chant. When they, when they offer one of their babies to one of their gods, it's a chant. There's that chanting, evil chant, and the devil uses that, and in the mobs we chant. Burn, baby, burn, burn, baby, burn. Talking about the police officers. Roast them like pigs in a blanket. Roast them like pigs in a blanket. Roast them. No, we won't go. No. And as I said Wednesday, Claudine and I were shocked Tuesday morning. We're watching television and there was a large church and they was bringing kids into church where they could learn about God. And maybe you've seen it. I mean, a, 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 a big group and the mob showed up there. And they was trying to stop them, and the mob was saying, save our children, save our children. In other words, we don't want our children to go in there and hear about God. We don't want them to, uh, to, to believe religious things. And we've seen them as they got in the face of little kids. Are you going in there? Moms and dads in their face. Are you taking your kids in there? Save our children, save our children. And the devil has always had his music, and he's always had his chant. But I want to tell you something, that the music that God gives is way more powerful, way more powerful than the devil's. Way more power. And the devil's is powerful. The devil was anointed. I, I'll be here tonight. The devil's music is powerful. One of the biggest... See, I haven't even got there. The Holy Spirit is leading. You, you know what is the biggest problem in the churches today? I'll tell you, they did a survey of the churches. I don't care what denomination. And here's what they said the two biggest problems was. Number one, music. Number two, people living together, not married. But number one is music. And I don't care what church it is. Uh, the young people who one time wept around our altars and was called into the ministry saying, we don't like that music. And older people are saying, I don't particularly like that music and it has divided churches and it has split churches and the Satan who's an expert on music says I know how to get into the church a kingdom or a house divided against itself cannot stand and I'll get in there and I will divide it with music and so we need to be aware of this so that we can fight what is happening and realize who we're fighting. We're not fighting young people. We're not fighting people who have a different tone for music. But we're fighting Satan that will influence and divide the church. And we need to know how to do it. And I'm glad to say that uh, the Bible has promised us that we can come through victoriously. I remember Jesus when he was... Uh, speaking and some people accused him of casting out devils by de and, and that's when Jesus says I, I'm not cast out uh, devils by bells Bob I, 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 how can he stand if I if I do that a a and he said 
Oh, I like this. You know, you know, whenever we was little kids, you didn't, ah, you guys didn't do it, we did. We, we little kids and we're all proud of our daddies, you know. And we used to get in an argument and, and we'd say, my daddy can whip your daddy. My daddy, my daddy can, my daddy can whip your daddy with his little finger. Well, Jesus said, if I with the finger of God do cast out devils, and maybe in the natural, but I'm telling you in the spiritual, my heavenly Father can whip the devil, and if you're serving him, my Father can whip your Father and cast him out with his little finger because the Word of God says so. There's power in the church, power in the name of Jesus, if we recognize who we're fighting and we use it. I can remember David. He's going to war. And the Philistines has come down. And David said, shall I pursue? And the Lord says, you, 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 uh, Tell you what I want you to do. I want you just to get back there behind those mulberry trees. And when you hear the rustling in the mulberry trees, well, that rustling can be a form of music because who can describe music? And they're waiting and finally there's the rustling in the mulberry trees. And David says, now it's time I can hear the music. Oh, we sing that song that I can, the move is on, my Lord, the move is on. I can hear the rustling in the mulberry. Well, I can hear the rustling in the mulberry trees and it's music to my ears because I believe that the Spirit of God in these this last days and especially since th this flu has came that God is going to do some great and tremendous time and it's time for us to get ready. It's time for us to get ready to move because God is going to give a revival I believe with all my heart one time more time we need to be listening. I'm listening. I, I, I can hear that rustling and I believe there's going to be people who's going to be set free. I believe there is people who's going to come to know Jesus as their personal Savior. I believe there's people who's walked away from God and no longer honor Him or sing for Him is going to hear the voice of God one more time and a revival's about to happen. I can hear the rustling in the mulberry tree and we need to get ready. Gideon remember he was going to go to war and, and he had an army and God says, you, you got too many. You, you remember the story. And so you take those down by the creek and let them drink and those that, that, that uh, uh, keep their eye on them and, and they, uh, th those people that drink in that certain way use them and there was only 300 of them. They're going against a host. And God told Gideon, take a light, put it inside a vessel, and get your trumpet in your other hand. And so they was given instruction and when they went out to meet the enemy, and it isn't interesting that God says, hold that vessel in your left hand, but in your right hand, your powerful hand, that's where I want you to have the trumpet. That's where I want the music. I, 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 I don't want you playing the trumpet left hand. I, with all your skill and strength and, and what you're the best with, have that trumpet. And so they went out and, and faced the enemy. And, and Gideon says, when I blow my trumpet, then you blow yours. We're going to break this vessel and let our little light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And when I blow my trumpet, you blow your trumpet. 
I'm glad that there wasn't some. This is well, I just don't feel like blowing it today. I, 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 I you know, I, I would have yesterday. And besides that, you got me right next to George. You ever hear George play, man? He hardly ever misses a note. And I, I don't think I'm going to. He says, no, 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 no. You get that in your right hand, whether you're the best, whether you're the least. It makes no difference. This is a trumpet that's going to shout out to the glory of God, and God's the one that's going to give the victory. If he called you to play the trumpet, he, he, he will give you the ability to play it as good as you can, but it doesn't make any difference if you can hit all the notes, some of the notes, as long as you're playing it under God and willing to face the enemy, then I'm going to give you victories. And so they broke the line. They, they started blowing on the trumpets. Uh, the enemy was so confused by the music of God. The music of God. The music of God confuses the enemy. Hallelujah. And they turned against each other. Oh, let me tell you. And a great victory came because they was li willing to listen to God. God uses music. Oh my goodness. Prodigal son, yeah, that's what I'm going to preach about. <laughs> Claudine's going like this. I can preach in seven or eight minutes. <laughs> okay, there was a... Uh, Woo, God's music is... It's time for you to pick up your trumpet. Let your light shine. It's time for you to sing and shout joy. Hey, some Christians walk around with their head down like, oh, we're losing this, we're losing that. We're women. God has never failed. It's time to shout. It's time to be joyous. It's time to be happy. It's time to dance for we're in the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. There was... Uh, there was this man who had two sons. 15th chapter of Luke. And by law, they was required. Uh, you had to, it wasn't something you wanted to do. You had to, by Roman law, you had to give uh, an inheritance to the kids, Jewish kids. So the time came, and, and uh, they says, hey, Dad, we want our inheritance. And so Dad gave them, see, I'm, I'm doing all right. And so Dad gave them both, not, not just the prodigal son both gave them both their inheritance and one of them says I'm out of here uh, I'm gonna go have a good time and and he took off and and he went and the Bible says he spent all that he had and now he's down there and he's saying man I, I'm broke and he's remembering the good he never been hungry before and now he's hungry and he and I need a job and so he fastens himself, which means that he had to beg for a job, and, and the guy says, okay, here's a job. You can have a job feeding pigs down there. And, and so now the prodigal son, he's feeding pigs, and, they, and it said he would faint. I mean, he's eating, he's eating the food that the pigs eat. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to leave your heavenly father, and he will take you down, and you'll find yourself eaten with the swine. And he said, you know what, my, my father has plenty and I'm not worthy to be a son. I think I'll go back home and I'm going to say, Dad, I'm, I've sinned against heaven, I've sinned against you and I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. Uh, but would you give me a job? Would, could I just be one of your servants? And so the prodigal son leaves and he's coming home and as I referred to a moment ago, his dad sees him. And he went to meet him. And they're hugging each other and the prodigal son says, Dad, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no more longer worthy to be called your son. But remember what he rehearsed and what he says now? He doesn't even get to finish it. If you read that, he doesn't even finish what he was going to say. Because his dad cuts him off right there. And he welcomes him back. And they're crying. And they're hugging each other. Son, I missed you so much. I, I had plans for you. You are my son. And he brings him back puts on 
the best robe, a ring on his finger, kills fatted calf, And a celebration, they're going to have a party. Well, the older son, he stayed there, but he's out in the field working, and he what? Hears music. Music will get your attention. I don't care who you are. You're going to like it, not like it. But turn it off, or listen to it. Uh, music will get your, there's something that has been created in us, and the elderly son hears music. And he turns to the servant and he says, what's going on? Now isn't that strange? Dad is having a party. That means that he's got, they're singing and dance, so he's got the dancers, he's got the orchestra there, they got the barbecue pit going. I mean, how could the son who's there at the house, working in the field, not know what's going on? How, how, why does everybody else knows, the servants knows, the whole community knows because they're coming? Why, why doesn't he know? The father didn't tell him because he knew the attitude of his son. And so the son finds out and he comes up. He's angry. Dad, how come you never had a party for me? I never got to bring my friends over. You never even so much as fatted calf. You never even killed a billy goat for me. And his dad said, son, all of this is yours. Everything that I have is yours. But through jealousy, when the music was being played, music of reunion, music of joy, music of happiness, my son has come back. Music? The older brother refused Come in. Oh, listen to me, people in ministry. I'm going to close with this. Just I want to show Claudine I can preach a short me message on. <laughs> I seen ministers jealous of other ministers. Oh, I'm glad that you churches don't know. I probably shouldn't have told you, but it happens. They're jealous of their ministry. But I also have seen singers that is jealous of singers. She, he don't sing any better than I do, and how come he's asked to sing Sunday night, and I'm lucky if I get to sing Wednesday night. He gets to preach at that convention that they're having. And they told me I could speak to the men's group. Why is this band getting to play there and they ask us to go over at this house where they're having service in there? And God hates jealousy. It said the boy would not go in. You know, Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, talk, he says, you won't go in. You won't go into the kingdom of God and you won't let others go in. You just block the way. 
And when we preachers are jealous of another preacher because they have a bigger church or they got to preach a revival or they got to speak at a fellowship meeting, but I only get to speak at a Sunday school class, can I say something? I'm hindering others from entering the kingdom of God. And when you don't sing, regardless of the size of the crowd, when you don't play regardless of the size of the crowd, you forgot who you're singing to. You forgot. See, when we sing next Sunday night, I'll enjoy it, but you're not singing to me. He loves music and he wants to hear from you. And you're singing to him and you're saying, Glory be your name. Holy is your name. He washed me in the blood. He's coming soon. Holy, holy is my precious. And when you sing to him, he gets blessed. And it's just a side benefit that it blesses my soul. And I begin to do the happy dance. It's not because of your ability. It's because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your ministry. And the anointing is not dependent on how good you are, but how humble you are and how willing you are to serve God in whatever capacity he's asking. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, oh Jesus, we love you. Master, help us to realize that it's all about you. <laughs> you've called us to worship you to give thanks to you holy is your name precious is your name wonderful is your name great is your name hallelujah we love you and the calling that you have given us regardless of it is was to lift you up and to give thanks to you. Mighty is your name. And help us, I pray, as we've heard this, to realize two or three things that you are powerful, that you want us to come home again. You want us to come back to the place where you have called us. And you want to use us for thy glory. That people will be saved, healed, delivered. There's people on drugs that need to hear our song. There's people in the gutters that the devil has tripped up. They need to hear from us. Our churches need to humble themselves. We need to have your presence, your power back in them. So forgive us this morning of everything that we have done that is displeasing to you. Anything that would hinder the moving of the Spirit of God that would hinder someone else from having their victory. Forgive us right now. And help us to humble ourselves. Renew our vow and say yes to you in whatever capacity that you want to use us. And we'll thank you for it. In thy lovely name, amen. Listen, folks, I'm as serious as I can be. We're leaving now, but... I see what's happened, this, this fear, this pandemic. People is being scared. I see riots. I see confusion. We, we don't have too long. To do God's business. If any of you have a calling on your life. I urge you, I beg you, 
I plead with you to get busy. I want you to pray more, fast more, and do, I don't care how silly that it is, do whatever God asks you to do. I've got to repeat this story one more time. You, you, you heard it, but my wife one time says, you know what I feel like doing? I feel like going out and handing out apples to all of our neighbors. Whoopee, you know. Didn't make much sense to me, but I could see in her eyes she felt like it. And she went out and gave out apples. Lest God told me I wouldn't have went along if she paid me. With little notes that God loved them. And I cannot tell you how many responses came in. I needed that. Thanks for thinking about me. We came home one time and there was a big basket of, what was it, fruit or flowers or something on it was from someone, I don't know who it was, just thank you for bringing that apple. An apple. Just, nobody she knew just handing out apples. And the response was tremendous. You see, I'm not preacher good enough to get you to do anything different than you have been doing. But if the Holy Spirit speaks to you and you pray more, you read your Bible more, you show kindness, you sing when you ask, you're faithful to the house of God, He takes notice of it. So I don't have to say this tonight. There's a scripture that I can give you where Paul is telling us to be faithful so that we will not be ashamed at His coming. See, there's going, see, until the tears are wiped away, and we always talk, oh, there's going to be the trumpet, and there's going to be the shout, and we're going to be caught up, and, and that's all true. But there's some at that time that's going to feel shame. Scripture declares so. And why wouldn't you when you think about it? Jesus died. He was beaten, whipped, nailed to a cross, bled, thirst, hungered, mocked for me. But I wouldn't say for him. I was asked to preach, but I didn't not know. There's the trump. I hear the shout. I see the nail-pierced hands now, and they remind me of the nail prints in his feet. Oh, my God. I should have tried to preach even if I just got up and said, Jesus, now it's too late. I... I don't care if I stuttered, if I stammered, if I had forgotten my... I should have got up. I should have stood at least for Jesus. And I'll be glad when the time comes that all tears is wiped away. Our Heavenly Father, we're leaving this place. But as we leave, may the Holy Spirit go with each individual that is here and speak safely, gently to them about faithfulness to the house of God, about their singing, about their preaching, about just being a buddy to somebody, to be like you. Help us to change in what time that we got left to win souls for you. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Be back.